Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's device management interface call. Uh, as usual, the call is recorded and will be published on YouTube. I think I missed the last one. I'll make sure to upload it. Um, we don't have a very heavy agenda today. I just wanted to, to meet and see where, where things are at. Um, first topic of, uh, of what, we, what we have is uh, that I added the logging discussion as a topic for next week's TST. Uh, I want to bring it up just, uh, you know, um, as, a, as a more general discussion over there, hoping to get some feedback from the operators that participate in the TST. Um, and the questions are the ones that uh, we posed last week. So what is the level of distraction uh, versus the detail? Uh, do we provide an API or we go directly to the box? Uh, what is, uh, who has the responsibility of the device log setting, the OpenOLT versus the device manager. Um, I, I linked the documentation there. Um, and uh, what I plan to do is uh, uh, bring examples of what we discussed last week. For example, what it, as, an, as an API example, the one that David was proposing, the name of the package, the log level, um, set log for this particular package. Um, so that's just something that I want to everybody to make sure uh, it's um, it's uh, in the TST next week. So I'll I'll bring it up and see where everybody's uh, thoughts are uh, there. Will that be fine for everybody? Yeah, that's yes. good. Okay, so also along the lines of the logging that was uh, discussed last week, uh, Infosys put together, the Infosys has been working on the logging fairly uh, recently uh, for the whole Volta stack. And they have been uh, very much um, working on uh, a stack, centralized log analysis uh, based on Elk stack. This is just what last week we suggested as a proposed uh, upstream solution, I guess. And this is nothing more than the documentation itself uh, for basically bringing up Elk Stack. Uh, and it's just in its, it's in a document and introduce, it has introduced uh, um, supporting kind Volta. Um, I've read through it, it's a fairly simple thing. This does not include anything from the device manager nor the OpenOLT as far as I understand. Uh, I know David, you had a look at it. Uh, does that make sense to you? What do you mean, does the document make sense? There's some comments going back and forth on it, particularly about um, how much detail needs to be in here, you know, in terms of configuration of credentials and that type of stuff. So uh -huh. does the, the, how much does this become a, um, yeah, we're going to use Elk, um, go read the manual, right? There's yeah. section five and six, I think, are or five or six or six or seven, which are interesting, six and seven, because it talks about exporting, import exporting. Yeah. And if that's not, what what I want to what I'm concerned about is I don't want to repeat data that's already on the the internet, and mm -hmm. so if there are already document references out there on how to do these things, yeah, um, my preference would be to just reference them, point people at them, right? Yeah. Uh, however, if there are things unique to our situation that need to be documented, then th those need to be documented. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I think this, for example, is something that we need needs to be documented. I think that all of this can be easily pointed at the documents, but it's fine by me. In general, I think that this is the suggested way we were talk. We were also talking. What we would need to add here uh, is a suggestion to export to system uh, to syslog and then our syslog and uh, and then with the whole stack. So again, something to keep an eye out for. 
uh, if you have any thoughts, just put them on the document. Uh, uh, I would agree with David too that these, this needs to be concised down and kept short. Uh, and just linking to the documentation itself. So apart from that, uh, if anybody wants to try it, I have not done that yet. Uh, probably when, uh, is this already merged that you know, David, or still to be? Um, it's in kind Volta already. Okay, then if anybody wants to try it, just go ahead and try it. And then uh, we would probably ought to extend it with uh, our syslog and stuff like that. So I'll, I might have to look into that one, but it's okay. We can take an action item on this. Okay. Um, so something else that I wanted to do is, uh, have, I've not done the Jira review, uh, let's do that. There is really nothing too much going on. Uh, I know, uh, there was a Jira closed by a meet. Um, it was a Jira closed by a meet, uh, that, um, was doing, uh, some names. Um, that was done. I, I don't think we have anything more to add that the interface looks okay at the moment. Um, Amit, anything that, uh, you want to bring up? Uh, no, from a uh, Jira perspective, I don't think there's anything outstanding. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, uh, something regarding uh, the discussion we were having last time regarding mm -hmm. uh, uh, user accounts on the device and uh, yes. uh, authorization. So uh, maybe after you get through all the things. Uh, uh, we can talk about it now. The last point I had on the agenda was asking Holger how's the, how's the implementation going. Okay, so uh, should we do that first? And yeah, Go ahead. No, let's, let's talk about the account authorization. We can come back to the implementation later. Yeah, so uh, basically I uh, had some questions on that, uh, just trying to understand uh, things a little uh, better. So uh, if I could take the share, I just tried to put my understanding on, uh, on a diagram so that uh, it's easier to uh, understand. So let me know once you're able to see my screen. Yes. Right, so uh, this is what uh, is my understanding, what uh, we talked about in the last uh, uh, call. And please, someone correct me if my understanding is not correct, right? So basically what we are saying is that uh, on the device, there will be multiple user accounts and these user accounts would be authorized to do certain permission uh, operations on the device. And uh, whenever we invoke an operation on the device through the device manager, the user uh, also needs to be mentioned for which this uh, operation or who is performing this operation. And this user account basically would come all the way from the northbound. Right. So depending on which operator is trying to reboot the system, that user will come in through the operator name to the device manager and then goes down all the way to the device where the authorization happens. And the authentication happens uh, between the let's say microservices at each of the levels, right? Between the operator name and the device manager, between the device manager and the OAP as well. So uh, is this understanding correct? Are you saying that all users A and B are the same users? So the user A and B on the device is the same user A and B, which is using NEM? Uh, yes, that is what I 
uh, I understood last time. No, hold on, no, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. At least from my understanding, what uh, Taskin was saying is that uh, the device has a set of users. Uh, it does not have to coincide with the users of many. Okay. Uh, the permissions have to coincide. If it doesn't coincide, there needs to be a mapping of like, such a user to such a user with such permissions on the on the device, but the two things don't have to be con, con, don't have to coincide. What it's important is that the device manager does not have the notion of users, meaning that it receives a certain call associated with a certain user to go to the device, but you don't have to log in to the device manager and then the device manager does it. What you are proposing here is uh, the simplest way of implementing this. No, so, sorry, Andrew, I'm not proposing anything. I just try to put this uh, asking if my understanding is correct or not. Uh, yes, what, what, what I meant is what you are... Um, showing here is the simplest way of achieving what was discussed with Circum last week. You basically have the same user all the way. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, NEM can keep a uh, uh, mapping of users um, and that is a little bit more complicated and you can have the user A being mapped to user B on the device. User A of NEM kept to user B on the device. Okay. So, okay, uh, that's, that's good. So if that is uh, uh, what we are saying, then I have drawn one more chart where I tried to change this. And basically here, what I am saying is that if we have only one user on the box, let's say that user is called DM, device manager, and it, it, that user is authorized to perform all management activities on the device. So we don't have any more any authorization in the, uh, or user level authorization because there is only a single user, right? Uh, basically authorization to do certain activities. That, that thing goes up into the operator name itself, where whenever a user wants to perform an operation, the authorization is checked there itself. So what remains down is only authentication. So the OLT just makes sure that yes, it is indeed the device manager which is trying to execute something or some operation. So, so if, if, if NEM has a mapping between user, username, user A, user B, and the username used to the actual device, what was shown in the previous slide and what's shown in this slide can both be implemented. Uh, yes, but here, uh, the difference is here we are saying that uh, on, the, on the device, we will have only a single user who has authorization to do all the activities. Um, yeah, but that's, that's a deployment choice at some level, right? So, so, so I mean, one question is then who decides who can do what, which component decides who can do what? Yeah. So that, that responsibility we are, we are proposing that we push it to the operator name, which does the authorization of which user well, can do what operation. Well, then you, you have, you'd have to have it in the device manager. You couldn't just leave it in NEM, right? Well, well, I guess if device manager is just a pass through. Well, effectively it is, David, for this type of things. Yeah. So to be, to be, at least to me, if the logic is in NEM, nothing changes in this, from this perspective. Yeah. As David was saying, uh, before you had four accounts and NEM had the mapping. Now you have one account 
and them has the mapping. This is simpler. Yeah. This is simpler, but the two don't don't uh, go one against the other. No, so uh, they don't go one against the other, but uh, what, what basically that means is we don't have to create multiple user accounts on the OLT with different uh, privilege levels and uh, yeah, different access levels, right? You're essentially saying you have a super user on, on the OLT. That's always a dangerous thing, right? But again, if someone wanted to deploy this, as long as NEM had a mapping from a user, from a NEM user, to an account which to use, this is a viable deployment if someone wants to do it. I, I mean, I don't think we want to restrict NEM and say the only way to do this is with a single account on the OLT. It is one option. Okay, so so if uh, okay, so what uh, advantage this gives us is that uh, we can take away the notion of a user from the device manager, right? With this, because there is only no. one user. No, because okay. that user information is in them. It's not in the device manager. I'm sorry, if we were to use this approach, right? Between the device manager and the OLT, there is always a single user. Okay, I, I don't think we want that. We definitely don't want that. There's going to be users who are going to be only accessing the read-only information, and there's going to be users who are authorized to do more things, like updating the devices, rebooting the devices. You don't want one user. The, 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 other, the other issue is if you have one user that's hard-coded into the device manager, that is the super user on the device, then you have to do authentication and authorization of the device manager anyway, because that is the gateway to a super user on the OLT. If yeah, the device so, manager is just a pass through, then you don't need that. Yeah, I, I get that. So what uh, I agree that yes, uh, we would have to know authorization and authentication of the device manager itself, right? But once it is authenticated and authorized, then uh, it could do uh, as in whatever is accepted by the operator name and coming down to the device manager. So basically the authorization is happening at the operator name. That is what I'm trying to propose. No, you don't, you don't, do, you don't do the authorization on the name. You don't, you do the authorization on the device. Why are we changing the design that we wait, already wait, wait. But, but even, the other issue is if someone can call the device manager directly outside the NEM. <laughs> so if that's possible, you have to, and the device manager is essentially the super user on the OLT, you're now moving all the security and knowledge, all the authentication and authorization down to the device manager. You have to. I I would agree with uh, I would agree with David here. Uh, let's say somebody ha uh, wants to access the device uh, on a side that is can can be done. I would much more advise having multiple accounts on the device and not just one. And again, if you go to the previous uh, uh, diagram that you were showing, yeah. This to me is uh, what needs to happen. And uh, the NEM keeps the mapping. And if somebody for some reason wants to do the device management single user for everything, it's his own deployment choice. I would not advise it, we would not advise it, but he can do it. But for the reasons that Taskin was uh, bringing up, uh, uh, having the different uh, privileges on the device, User A can have a privilege to read only. User B can have privilege to reboot. User C can have pseudo privileges. Uh, I would like to have multiple accounts on the OLT. And then the NEM can say, okay, I'm logged in as a network administration administrator. I have uh, user C permissions on the, on the device. I'm logged in as, uh, I don't know, demo manager. I'm only read on the device. 
Okay, uh, so I think I you, missed one you part. Still, you still have, if you want to go that, if, if an operator wants to have only a single user and manage everything through a single user, let them do it. I mean, it's, it's their choice. But do not put the information, uh, what you call restriction, that everybody has to have a single user. It's a bad idea. Give the flexibility to the, the operators to, to manage their devices with a single user if they choose to, or multiple users with the different privileges. Okay, so, um, okay, so, if, if that is uh, what uh, we decide, then uh, we have to make corresponding changes to the API, right? Because uh, then each API has to take in uh, the user who is trying to execute that API. So no, or you, you pass it as metadata around the API. No, yeah. Um, did, did you take a look at the uh, spec I sent you? Yeah, I, I I did look at it. Yes. Okay. So if you if you look at that one, the user information is not always passed uh, around with the uh, to the device manager with the API. Um, the, the whole idea is, and the other uh, tools or the uh, other device managers, Redfish, are also doing the same things. Yeah, you don't That's exactly pass months. the user information, but you pass the session ID, which represents yes. the user who's, who's exactly. on that session, right? Yeah. Exactly. So you yeah, have so some notion, some notion of the user who's executing that API needs to be present along with the API. Of course. I mean, yeah. some, some API is being called. You, you want the, uh, whoever is ma managing the device underneath, under, in the OLT or the other devices needs to know who's calling and if they are authorized to do an action. Yeah, so, so basically why, why I started bringing, drawing this chart is basically I was trying to think, right, how do we do those changes with the current APIs that we have? And then I was thinking of why not try to push this entire authentication authorization problem to the operator name itself, because ultimately these users exist at the name, right? And they, they need to be mapped to one or more users at the OLT, as we already discussed. So I was thinking if we could simplify that and have only a single user at the OLT, you could have multiple users at the NEM, right? But your authorization for the operations could happen out there itself. But yeah, if, if that is not a good idea, then uh, so be it, that's okay. Uh, so then uh, the next step for me would be to think, okay, how do we uh, pass in this uh, information uh, that to transparently, right? through the device manager. And right, and that's where I think from a gRPC perspective, you, you're mm -hmm. probably gonna be looking at some of the metadata that can be added onto a call. Exactly. There are, there's, um, there's some examples out on the internet uh, about, about that yeah. using, um, the metadata to pass information and I think that's what's going to happen and it also means if you're passing down a credential it there may need to be some sort of encryption on that credential to, to make sure it's secure as well uh, it has to be true HTTPS uh, okay. yeah but even even if you're using HTTPS you don't want to clear pass anything in clear text you probably want to do some encoding on it well, you, you may you may but, but, but my, my, my question is, um, how can the device manager know that for a certain operation that the user is really authorized to do it? Device manager doesn't. It shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, this is fine. But then um, this means you would have to execute the action and to find yep. out that yep. but the problem is that the device manager is a mediation device. So it's not just one action. It might be 10 action he has to do. And one of these perhaps are not allowed or whatever. I mean, it's. That's where the notion of batch operations lies. It's going to be an all or nothing. Yeah. And, uh... it, it, it is possible the device manager as a OLT user executes five commands and the third one fails. 
that is a possibility. And that means you've the, the operator has their security set up incorrectly. And setting up security is complicated. Um, it would be nice if the system knew how to do uh, commands as a batch so that it could be an all or nothing, but it might be that it just fails out partial. It might be that it tries to do a back out. I mean, th there are various things there. Yeah. Uh, um, think of it from the user's point of view, or as we discussed previously, device manager is uh, just a pass-through for these commands, always. Uh, it, it doesn't know, even know if the OLT can do this action, or if the user is authenticated to do this. If the operator on the dashboard is trying to do five different commands, um, and one of them happens to be with a uh, user ID or a, or a session ID that user is not uh, allowed to do. Four of them may work, 51 is gonna fail. That means the operator has set up the user account with the wrong credentials. Yeah, but it's not really a path through. I mean, this image suggests that you have operation one on, on the NEM, on the device manager and on the OLT. But this is not the case. I mean, the, the OLT device is managed by SNMP, for example. And so there is no one-to-one -one mapping to whatever. So you have to do, the device manager has to have the logic to do something and it's not a pass-through. If it this would be a pass-through, this would be easy. Give us an example why it's not pass-through. It's a totally different interface. I mean, um, if you if you want to download a software, this is one operation on the device manager, but these are 10 operations, might be 10 operations or five or three, I mean, whatever, okay, on the no, OLT. No, there's, there's a different thing that you're talking about. The, no, but, but I agree, it could be more than one operation. I, I, but what are you, what is the uh, conclusion you're drawing from that, I guess the question is. It, it doesn't really matter if it's one or 10 operations. Uh, the, the NEM will ask for that operation with one user. If that user can do those 10 operations on a different interface, we're golden. If it can't, we're just going to fail the operation entirely right. to NEM. Right. I just wanted to say it's not a path through, sorry, because it sounded yep. like um, it's a path through and it's not really. Agreed. So, I mean, it Agreed. Could, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it could be that, for example, for a software update, you have to do a reboot at some point in time, and you are allowed to do. I, I mean, this doesn't make sense here, but just as an example, you are allowed to do a software download. So you, you can put, uh, you can force the device to put something on on the standby partition, but you're not allowed to reboot it and to make this software active. Again, then, uh, isn't it true that, that you, the operator has set up the user's credentials incorrectly? In, in one yeah. case, some mm -hmm. of the admin uh, uh, are going to be allowed for a user, but some of the actions for the admin are not going to be allowed. I mean, that's not how it should be. Right? If you're an admin, you should be able to do whatever the admin operations are. But, you, but again, if the point is that, yeah, it, it's not necessarily operation one doesn't map to operation one on uh, operation one in NEM, maybe multiple operations from the device manager to the old team. Absolutely agree with that. So, okay, uh, so, sorry to ask this question again, right? But why can't this authorization be done at the name layer? So why can't we check that whether user A is allowed to reboot the OLT or not at the operator name layer itself? You can, you can. The point is, I don't wanna see it in the device manager. No, I'm not talking about the device manager. I'm saying the operator name itself, not if the device manager. If the operator manager. name itself has notion of uh, all the operations that a user on a device can do, the it's perfect. No, it, it has no the the no, nem not, not all has the, the notion. The nem has the notion of what operations nem operations a user can do. That's what it knows. So when the when a, someone goes into nem and says do X. NEM says, is user is NEM user A allowed to do X? And yes. if so, it says NEM user A is OLT user C, and I pass that information to the device manager. I may actually, the NEM may actually call multiple operations on the device manager. So what, what we are saying is that, that the proper setup is that uh, 
user A of NEM is mapped to user uh, XYZ of the OLT, and if that mapping is incorrect, we are then you, yeah, that's true. You're screwed up. Yeah, and that yes. mapping is in the operator of NEM, so effectively, a meet we are already checking because that mapping is a static mapping. It's not going to be anywhere um, dynamic, most likely. So given a static mapping, you are, are already checking. So it's, if everything is set up correctly in that mapping, there is no way you can fail the operation on the device. That is correct. Well, assuming they've, they've authorized assuming the OLT user correctly. Yes, that's also correct. There's going to be, uh, I think there are going to be two authentication. One, uh, an operator, a real operator is going to go log into the dashboard. There's, there has to be an authentication, obviously, at that point, so that they can see uh, uh, what's, what's going on on devices, initiate the operations of, I'm going to go ahead and update the device, for example. And there is going to be another authentication on the OLT side that says, okay, somebody is talking to me and it says he's the user A. Uh, is it is he really user A? You have to go ahead and authenticate uh, that as well. Um, and that mapping internally is going to go into the X, uh, XYZ in the OLT itself. The user A may be logged into the dashboard, but the user is going to be XYZ on the OLT side. You have to do th those both security. You have to know that somebody is talking to me and he's really that person. And if that mapping is wrong, I do agree there is going to be a problem. But I mean, um, sorry, perhaps I'm still confused, but I guess we will have like functional accounts on the OLT, right? And we will have personal account in accounts in them. And for example, XYZ could be a, an admin user and PPP is a diagnosis user, right? Right. And user A and, sorry, did you say no? I think that's an option. I didn't say no. no. I think okay, that's an so, option. Yeah. The operator yeah. could could create on the OLT an admin or as we talked about a read write and a read only uh, operator on the OLT and then map all the NEM users to one or both of those. Or it could have, um, as indicated in the other slide, it could have only a single OLT DM user, which has read-write access, and map all the operate, NEM operators to that single user. Or the more complicated, but in general, much more secure, or secure and auditable one would every user in NEM also has a separate user account on the OLT. Again, but this is an operator's choice. Yes. Yes, oh, yes. It should be operator's choice. We should provide that functionality if they choose to use. Obviously, if they choose a single account, it's their choice. Isn't this what happens already in existing deployments? Like you have a device with a certain accounts and somewhere you have a mapping to other accounts? That has to be, right? Because these are not uh, what you call uh, a single inte uh, integrated system. It, they are loosely integrated. Um, somebody is going to be talking to the OLT. OLT needs to know if you're going to pass the security audit. audit or you, OLT has to know who's talking to it. But at the same time, somebody else is also logging into the dashboard on the NAM side. Uh, again, that authentication has to be also uh, validated. Uh, there's going to be, there's always uh, in the, what do you call, multi-tiered applications, there's always this notion of mapping the user account here, the user account there. Again, it has to be done by the operator to say, I'm going to use it single account or multiple accounts. I'm going to have read-only accounts or just like uh, uh, David. Now where this gets, yeah, where it could get interesting is if you say, look, NEM's going to support attack X authorization mechanism, authentication authorization mechanism. And also the OLT supports attack X authorization mechanism. In that case, you set up all your users in TACX and 
it works for both them and the OLT. Oh, it's however they are setting it up. The important thing is, I'm to totally agreeing with you. Um, there could be only a single authentication mechanism uh, that authenticates both dashboard and OLT. Yeah. Again, it's a setup that, uh, what do you call, the, authentic um, the operators has to decide. I I at the end, there, there could be uh, only a single authentication. It's like, I, I can't see people doing an AD uh, server and doing the authentication for OLT and NAM from the same AD server. It's, it's totally acceptable. But in, it's still validates the fact that who is talking to me is always validated. That's the reason why I don't like the idea of like doing all the authentication on the NAM side, because then you're going to be assumed that the OLT is being talked to somebody, but except that OLT doesn't know uh, if it's really an authenticated user. Agreed. So uh, I think we have reached a consensus on uh, how this should be handled. Um, this is recorded, so we can always go back, but I would really like for this to be documented. Uh, can I ask you to do, to do so, Amit? Yeah, uh, but I think we should document this in the minutes of uh, the, the Google Doc that we have, right? Uh, because that, I don't know where exactly. Have, uh, that I have done. Uh, it's it's in there. Uh, at least a summary uh, uh, yeah. of uh, what it was done. Um, I would still like it to be a little expanded and maybe a diagram to be put, as you have uh, as you have shown there. Um, and just be updated on the in an MD file in our repo. Yeah, so I think we next need to look into the implementation uh, aspects of this, right? Yes. So how does it how does it affect the implementation of the products that we have, right? I if at all there is an implication, that is when it needs to go in there. Else, uh, doesn't it doesn't make any uh, difference, right? It, it can just be in the in the readme.md yeah that's that's the only place where we could just write about it yeah so uh, i think we'll we'll look up onto the uh, as in what what do we need to change uh, or how do we bring in this uh, passing of this metadata through the device manager so let's look into that and then uh, appropriately we will put in the documentation Yes, I assigned uh, an action item on the on the agenda to you. Can I take back control of the presentation? Yes, please. You see my screen? Yep. Awesome. Okay. So um, I somewhat tried to get track of it, summarizing what we have decided and um, signed to a meet. Uh, last item of the day, I would like Holger to give us an update on how things are going on the implementation side. Finding any any DAO, any things that uh, as a team need to be addressed in the interface because it seems uh, very tricky to implement, I guess. Um, sorry, I'm again not prepared to do that. Uh, but anyway, so we have implemented now uh, alarms and metrics. And so we could use our OLT and could um, provide the device management um, functionality for it, so this is working. So we can see alarms and metrics in, in Kafka. So I think it's possible to implement it. Um, it's 
quite, I still think it's quite complex and what we're currently doing is, is inventory, for example. So the, the hardware management API, um, and this is, I think really complex and but it's not me who's doing this currently. So I cannot really talk about it, this, but. Um, uh, what does it mean when you say complex? Uh, what, what, is the, what is the issue, I guess? I mean, the whole hierarchy, you have all the, the different entities in, I mean, the model is quite complex, I think. Um, uh, because it's difficult to model around what you guys have or because it's just complex? Person. I think no, for us, it's quite difficult just to understand what to do and just to support everything which is needed by the model. So, um, I mean, our model is a totally different model. So it's, um, we have to map and remap and everything. So this is complicated, but it's, um, but I think this is probably the case for any model. So it's just, um, we have to get used to it and. Yeah, one, one, thing, that yeah. I, one thing that I can say is that if there is something that is, uh, unsupported by your device, I wouldn't go uh, too far off your path to implement something that on the interface on the device manager that is not possibly implementable on your device. So I would just, if something gets called on that, just return not implemented or not un, like error or gRPC unimplemented. So yeah, 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 sure, sure. And, and, and we're currently not thinking about uh, implementing everything. So we're just doing a um straightforward implementation to just find out that it's working and not do everything for now. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, any, I guess you can also, if you have any feedback around that, or if you have any questions, any clarifications during the implementation phase that, uh, you would like to get from this group, please do bring them up in the call or invite your colleagues that have questions to this call so they can also ask us things. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, what I wanted to do is um, when we, I mean, we're currently quite in a, in a hurry to implement it and that when we have the main things done that we will think about it and get back to you, talk about it, so just to um, sort everything and get a better understanding. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, um, I don't have any other topic for the day. Um, anything I do have a question. Any questions? Yeah, uh, on the hardware inventory side, do we have a standard definition of what's the base information that we are going to be uh, returning from the OLT side that describes what the device is for the assessment management? Uh, do you mean, uh, uh, do we have a minimum viable set of elements yeah. that need to be returned? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I don't think so, uh, at least not that I know of. Uh, Amit, do you know if uh, like DT or um, anybody else, um, like uh, Murat, do you know if TT has a list of things that they want to see out of the device manager in terms of inventory? Uh, not really, I don't have. Oh, sorry. Um... Hello. Sorry, mm -hmm. go on. Yeah, so not really, I don't have such a list, but uh, what I could uh, think of certain things that would be needed are uh, the, the ports and the SFPs, the fans, power supply. Oh. I mean, there, there should be something that identifies what the device is, what the serial number is, what the capability of the device is, but there should be a minimum Actually, your term is correct. Minimum viable list. Sorry, Tuscan, I, I didn't get you clearly. I, they, they, they should, there should really be a, I, I like the term viable list that describes 
Uh, what, first of all, what the device is, I'm pretty sure it's going to be uh, supporting, we are, we are going to be supporting more than ORT going forward. Um, but something that describes what the device is, who the vendor is, what the serial number is, um, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there, there sh we should have a base that describes what a device definition is. And that, that I'm pretty sure is going to include the uh, power supplies and the fans and the amount of, uh, I don't know, cards, etc. I mean, we, we should have a definition. Yes. Yeah, so I think DT has a list, um, but perhaps we should simply ask uh, Manuel or, or Bjorn to provide it. I think that's reasonable. Uh, Murak, you were trying to say something? Yeah, actually, we, we don't also have an exact list of this, but we are uh, continuously talking with the TT guys uh, on this. So uh, I, I think uh, we can talk to uh, them again. And uh, I, I basically, actually, uh, I call, or call them to uh, participate uh, in this, uh, some of the calls, uh, device management brigade calls, but uh, they are really busy nowadays. So uh, I, I cannot, I cannot get them to here. So uh, we will, we will have a list, I think, uh, shortly. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. Uh, I think uh, taking the action item of a meet, uh, going to investigate it with Manuel and Bjorn, a meet or, or holder, it depends on who exactly you prefer to, to do it. Uh, to investigate it with Manuel and Bjorn, that's a good, that's a good point. And uh, um, for you, Burak, if you can ask the Turk Telecom folks, uh, I would be, yeah, sure. uh, we, could, we could create that list. And uh, as we have done for the, for the minimum viable list of uh, events and metrics, we can do the same thing for the um, for device. the list of objects of device information. Thanks, uh, thanks, Dustin. It's a good point. I'll I'll return this into a Jira item for myself. Perfect. Okay. Um, anything else? Okay. Then, uh, if not, thanks everybody for joining. I'll publish last week's recording and this week's recording on YouTube right now, so I don't forget. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'll see you next week. In the meantime, please do take your action items and let's continue to work on them. And anything, uh, let's, uh, let's keep in touch on the Slack channel on the mailing list. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye. Thanks, bye.